Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Innal hamdalillah hamdan hamdan wa nashkuru syukran syukran wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkal alaihi wa na'udzu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina may yahdihillahu fala mudilla lahu wa may yudlil fala hadiya lahu. Wa asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la syarika lahu wa asyhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alaihi wa sallam tasliman katsiran mazida. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wahlul 'uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli Allahumma rabbi zidna 'ilman wa razuqna fahman subhanaka la 'ilma lana illa ma 'allamtana innaka antal 'alimul hakim Allahumma waffiqna bi 'ilmin wa 'amalin bima tuhibbu wa tardha Allahumma razuqni ikhlasa bil qawli wal 'amal I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may this session be a means of salvation for the sins you have committed amin I also pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that for every second and minutes where we invest into this session, may this investment be amongst our investment for us to draw ourselves closer to our maker, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. I also pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he grant me the ability to present and may he grant you the ability to understand whatever goodness solely lies in the hands of our maker, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and whatever evil I would like to ascribe to myself and then shaitan. Alhamdulillah. Praises and thank to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has bestowed upon us another mercy of his for us to tune in to this session of understanding the relationship between the parents and the children and how must or how is it highly encouraged for the parents to take care of the children. And amongst the point where I have mentioned in my previous session is when we talk about, you know, how does the parents does not discriminate between the sons and daughters in his affection and spending. You know, there are times and particularly in those olden days where they differentiated between the differentiation of genders. They prefer sons over daughters. However, in the advanced world where we're living in, where so much of efforts has been contributed, particularly in the country where we're living in, in Singapore, that they are highly encouraging on giving the rights to the respective genders, mm -hmm. i.e. the males should receive their rights and the women's also need to reap their uh, leave and also to receive their rights. It is fulfilling every, everyone's rights. Both are creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we should never, we should never look down on any of the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the amount of merits which will be received by a person who literally does take care of a woman where from the hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa we are aware that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewards a parent who literally instill, nurture, protect the daughter and literally guide them in their life being the caretaker, the amount of reward which, it, which has been installed for them. And in this successive session of ours today, we will explore on how one should be alert to everything that may have an influence on our children. So as a smart Muslim father, right, he keeps his eyes open as far as his children are concerned. He's always aware. He observes what the children are doing. Not on, not placing a lot of clamp down and restriction upon them, just so that they are moving towards the right direction. And he knows what they are reading and writing. The hobbies they have adopted or they have chosen, which he may have encouraged them to follow without them realizing it. The friends with whom they spend most of their time and the places they go in their spare time, he knows all of this without the children feeling that he is watching them. If he finds anything objectionable in their reading materials or hobbies or finds that they are hanging around with undesirable friends or going to unsuitable places or taking up bad habits like smoking, wasting time and energy on 
prohibited games that make them accustomed to triviality and ideal pursuits. He puts them straight in a gentle and wise manner and persuades them to return to the straight and straight and narrow. Now, every newborn, every newborn baby is born upon fitra, right? The innate disposition of an individual, the natural state of man. And it is only the parents who, through their guidance, they are being branded later on, right? It's, they are the one who's grooming them. The very first influences in the family or the very first influences in any child life would be the parents. So this is why we must be very, very careful on how we are going to influence them. Like one of a famous poet, Adiya Ibn Zaid al-Abadi, he related concerning friends. If you are amongst people, then make friends with the best of them. Do not make friends with the worst of them, least you become as bad as he is. Do not ask about a man, but ask about his friend, for every person is influenced by his friends. So as how our surrounding is, then when we have a child, we're going to influence them based upon what we have been influenced upon. So we must be very mindful. So the true Muslim father takes notice of his children's books, magazines, hobbies, school, even teachers, clubs, media interests, and everything that may have an impact on their personalities, minds, souls, and faith. He should intervene when necessary, either to encourage or to put a stop to something so that the children upbringing will not be affected by corruption or sickness. Hence, we can explain the success of some families in rising, raising the children, raising their children and the failure of others. The former feels responsible towards the, their children and take care of them properly. So the children become good for the family and the community at large. The latter do not feel their responsibility, so they neglect their children and the children become bad for their family and the community at large, a source of distress in their life and after death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu inna min, in, inna min awladikum, inna min azwajikum awladikum fitnatun fahdharu. Truly amongst your wives and your children, there are some enemies. So be careful, right? Beware. So as such, a Muslim is always careful. And the fact that he also wants to spread equality amongst his children. Equality of love, equality of care, equality of compassion, equality of all the positive vibes. He does not, he, he does not make uh, unfair emotions towards his children. He would always try his utmost best to equally love them and equally care for them. So having equality, treating them equally is highly encouraged in Islam. This is amongst the elements of wise upbringing is for the parents to treat all their children equally and not to favor one of them over the others in any way. The child who feels that he is treated fairly and that he and his brothers are equal will grow up with a healthy self-esteem free from feeling of inferiority. He will not hit his brother or eat his heart out of jealousy, but will be content tolerant, kind, caring towards others. This is what Islam encourages and other orders parents to do. <clears throat> there is a very profound hadith of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu which has been recorded in Bukhari and Muslim, said by Nu'man ibn Bashir. Said, my father brought me to the Prophet and said, I've given this son of mine a slave. I have so this father gave a 
give his son a slave which he had. And the prophet asked him, have you given each of your children the same? He said, no. So the prophet told him, then take back the slave. So you do not favor one over the other. This would be the avenue to introduce to them the negative vibes over the positive vibes. So as how we are going to treat them equally would then cause equality amongst themselves. If we ourselves are biased over one than the other, then that's when you will find <coughs> the differences. According to another report, Nuhman said, the Prophet wasallam asked, have you done the same for all your children? The father said, no. So the Prophet said, fear Allah and treat all of your children equally. So my father went and took back his gift. So according to a third report, Prophet wasallam asked, O Bishr, do you have any other children? He said, yes. The Prophet asked, Will you give a similar gift to each of them? He said, no. So the Prophet said, do not ask me to witness this because I do not want to witness unfairness. Then he added, would you not like all of your children to treat you with equal respect? Of course, Bisha replied. So Rasulullah says, so do not do that because when you're going to <coughs> give one, <coughs> one thing, when you're going to give one child one gift and neglecting the other child, this is only going to cause friction amongst them because naturally, naturally, human being, including myself, we all have the tendency of jealousy, tendency of hatred, tendency of doing things which are inappropriate. <clears throat> so as much as possible, we as Muslims, we should practice fairness and equality. So therefore, the Muslim who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treats all his children with equal fairness and does not favor one above the other in giving gifts, spending money on him or in the way he treats him. So all of them will pray for him, love him and treat him with kindness and respect. And as such, his parents are the one who instill good behavior and attitude in them. So when, when children's heart are thus filled with contentment and goodness, the father can then raise them up to the level of high morals and noble human virtues. So he instills in them good manners such as caring for others, helping the weak, being kind to relatives, respecting elders, being merciful to the young, cheerfully doing good and striving to spread justice amongst people. A person cannot give that which he does not have. The man who, the man was right, who said righteousness comes from Allah and good manners comes from parents. Righteousness, al-bir, ya'ti min Allah. Wal-akhlaq al-tayyib, al-khuluq al-tayyib, ya'ti min al-walidayn. So the smart Muslim father understands his children's psychology and know how to instill wisdom and good attitudes in them using the best methods of parenting in order to do so, such as getting a good example, coming down to their level, treating them well, cheerfully showing mercy, humility, love, interest, encouragement, fairness, advice, correction and guidance. He is lenient towards them without being weak and he is strict without being cruel. This is important. Right? You're being lenient without being weak. Lenient, leniency is having that you are firm in the decision you make, but yet you show some avenue, some mercy upon them. And at times we must be strict, but that does not mean that you should be cruel upon them. So it is having the check and balance of the emotion of ourselves on how we are going to nurture and treat them is how they are going to respond back to us. Thus the children will grow up in an atmosphere of care, compassion and affection that can only produce caring, kind, loyal and righteous children whose personalities are strong, who are willing to give 
and to shoulder their responsibility. This is the norm for families who raise their children on Islamic principle and the teaching of the Quran. When Ahsan min Allah, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in the Quran in Surah Al Baqarah, chapter number two, verse 138, now we take our color from Allah and who is better than Allah at coloring? Who is better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than guiding? Who is better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Then giving us through his revelation on how we need to take care. So, when a person understands on how he needs to take care of his children, right? Me being a father of my children, and there are many others amongst them, we would then learn and understand and also nurture a society which is founded upon the revelation of our maker which has been practiced by our beloved prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so in this upcoming sessions we will be exploring on how a muslim need to communicate with his relative with his relation with his relatives, how does he communicate with his relative and how does he speak with them and how, what are the ties of kinship where he need to hold a point and to what degree must they hold a point. So the very primary, the very primary understanding of relation and relative, it comes to al-mah al-ahram, right? Al-ahram here means al-arham. Al, uh, al what is the meaning of al arham The word here is al arham not al ihram I made a mistake. It's al arham arham means kindness, you know, kinship. Kinship is something where we need to hold a point where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam say, you know, when wasala, you know, whoever holds on to the tie, Allah subhanahu wa taala will also show mercy upon him. So a Muslim's kindness, respect, and good treatment are not limited just to his parents, spouse, and children, but extend to his relative, right? It extends to his relatives, all of whom he should treat well. In the Quran, the word used is al-arham, literally means wombs, which refers to relatives to whom a person is linked by ties of womb and blood whether they are his hay or not. So Islamic viewpoint of kinship ties, as we know that Islam has recognized the ties of kinship in a way that is unparalleled in other religions. It enjoins Muslims to uphold the ties of kinship and condemns the one who breaks the tie. There is no greater proof of the emphasis placed by Islam on the ties of kinship then the vivid picture painted by the Prophet ﷺ who described kinship Rahm, as standing in vast arena of creation and seeking refuge with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from being cut off. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala answers its prayer and taking care of those who maintain the ties of kinship and cutting off those who cut off this ties. This is seen in Sahih al Hadith narrated by Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said Allah created the universe. Allah created the universe and when he had finished kinship stood up and said this is the standing up of one who seeks your protection from being cut off. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said yes would it please you if I were to take care of those who take care of you and cut off those who cut you off? It said, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, then your prayer is granted. Then the Prophet recite, if you wish. Then Allah reveals in the Quran, in chapter number 47 in Surah Al-Muhammad, right? If you, if you open to the fabric of the Quran, right? In chapter number 47, verse number 22 to 23, when I say, 
فهل عصيتم إن توليتم أن تفسدوا في الأرض وتقطئوا أرحامكم أولئك الذين لعنهم الله فأصمهم وأعمى أبصارهم لأن الله قام تنيو سفلا يتدبرون القرآن أم على قلوبهم أقفالها وسيس دين Is it to be expected of you if you were put in authority that you will do mischief in the land and break your ties of kin? Such are the men whom Allah has cursed for he has made them deaf and blinded their sight. The hadith is narrated in Bukhari Muslim. And there are many, many more ayahs of the Quran when it reiterates and affirms the position of Arham in Islam. Encouraging people to uphold the ties of kinship and instilling a strong sense of the importance of recognizing kinship rights and avoiding neglect of those rights and warning against abuse of them. One of these ayah when Allah says in the Quran in chapter number four, Ya ayyuhan nas, suttaku rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum nafsi wahida wa khalaqam minha زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء فاتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به فاتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحم what it means فاتقوا الله be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from whom you demand demand your mutual rights and reverence the womb that you bore this ayah commands men to fear Allah First and foremost, then places respect for Ar Arham, second to the Taqwa, in order to emphasize its importance. For the true Muslim, the fact that Rahim is often mentioned in conjunction with belief in Allah and good treatment of parents is enough to confirm its status and importance. And Allah say, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِلْ your Rabb has decreed that you worship none but him, that you be kind to your parents. And then he say, and render to the kindred their due rights. And to those in want, and to the wayfarer, but squander not your wealth in the manner of kindred. Do you know? Do not waste your money. And then in chapter number 4, verse number 36, Allah says, أُعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْءُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ يَحْسَانًا وَبِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْيَتَامَى وَالْمَسَاكِينِ وَالْجَارِذِ الْقُرْبَى وَالْجَارِذِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals in chapter number 4, verse number 36, when he speaks vividly regarding how we need to worship Allah. Amongst the way to worship Allah is number one, refraining to set a rivalry against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we only solely worship him, then we will give the due rights to our parents by fulfilling their needs, which I have already explained to you extensively in the previous session. And then how we need to take care of our relatives and then also maintain a degree of tie with the orphans, those who are in need. And also taking care of the rights of the neighbors who are near and neighbors who are strangers, those whom you know and those who you do not know, and the companion by your side and the wayfarer. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala right, is guiding the humanity as a whole that how we as a Muslim need to worship. We worship, what is the purpose of us worshipping? For us to have a better mannerism. The more we pray the more our akhlaq are being shaped. And the more the akhlaq are being shaped, the more we are able to have an amicable conversation and communication with our loved ones. And then also to the extended uh, relations and friends. And it's always to at least have a minimal time. And here, kind treatment of Relatives comes one degree below kind treatment of parents on the scale of human relationship as defined by the Quran. From there, kindness and respect extends to encompass all those needy members of the greater human family. This suits human nature, which is more inclined to start with kind treatment of those who are closer. It is also in harmony with the overall Islamic system of social organization 
and mutual responsibility which starts with the family then is really extended first to relatives and then to society at large in a spirit of mercy and friendship which makes life more pleasant and beautiful for mankind so upholding the ties of kinship is one of the major principles in islam one of the fundamental that is religion the religion has always encouraged us to hold on to kinship and has promoted from the very first day the prophet began to preach his message it is of the most characteristic features of islamic law this has been reflected in the lengthy conversation of abu sufyan with hercules when the emperor asked abu sufyan what does your prophet order you to do he answered he tells us worship allah alone and do not associate anything with him give up the religion of your forefathers he tells us to pray to give charity to be chaste and to uphold the ties of kinship these were the primary messages which has been relayed by prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam which has then been captured and documented and turned into the practices which was practiced by trillions and zillions of people around the world and it is also a guideline for you and for me to continuously get on the pathway of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to the utmost best of an individual as you know that upholding the ties of kinship is counted as one of the major characteristic of this religion along with pure monotheistic belief in allah establishing prayer and adherence to truthfulness and chastity which were being explained to those questioners for the very first time in the lengthy hadith of amr ibn anbar and barsa which includes many of the basic teaching of islam he said i entered upon the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in makka meaning at the beginning of his prophethood and asked him what are you he said a, a prophet i asked what is a prophet he said allah has sent me i asked him with what he has sent you he said he has sent me to uphold the ties of kinship to break the idols and to teach that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is one and has no partner whatsoever so in summary of the most important principle of islam the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has clearly gave precedence to upholding the ties of kinship and mentioned it amongst the foremost features of faith this is indicative of its high status in the framework of this religion which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed as a mercy to this world and no doubt upholding to ties of kinship it's amongst the rahma allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have bestowed upon this ummah who have granted upon this ummah and our duty as a muslim and as a mu'min as a believer it is to strive our utmost best strive our utmost best to retain the relationship with our relative at least visit them or if you come across you are able to say salam to them and have a small chat with them without them you will not have a family without the family you would not have a support without the support you would not have a help and without an help you will just be lost in this world alone so look at this entire block of mercy where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to this ummah and it is through his rahma that we are continuously being wrapped under his mercy and having the ties of relationship is no doubt it's a mercy from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> so hopefully what i have shared with you in this session have benefited everyone and may you and i continuously hold on to the ties of kinship to the best 
of our ability. And if we can't, at least we supplicate for them, which we will explore in the upcoming sessions. Jazakumullah khairun jazak. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Wal asri. Inna al-insana la fi khusr. Illa al-ladhina aman wa amadu salihat. Wa tawasqa bil-haq wa tawasqa bil-sabar. Jazakumullah khairun jazak. Hope we can explore more in the upcoming sessions. Take care. Assalamu alaikum. ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته